Road and Track presents The Need for Speed was developed by Electronic Arts and released on the 3DO back in 1994. This installment of the game marks the very first entry into the series, with games still being released under the Need for Speed moniker to this very day. Being a product of 1994, the game has plenty of 90s charm. Like many games of the era, there is a ton of full motion video, or FMV for short. The FMV is divided into two distinct categories, the first being car porn. There is plenty of decent quality footage of the game's eight cars racing through the back roads and racetracks, burning out and doing other wonderfully inappropriate activities. The other half of the FMV is the game's antagonist. From the moment you fire up the game to the car select screen, before races, between races, this guy is always yammering at you with the appropriate level of 90s tood. You certainly wouldn't take this approach with a modern game, but there is a certain appeal to it if you're into classic games. But early CD stumblings aside, let's move on to the meat of the game. Actually, before we do that, we have to get through one of the most confusing menu systems I've ever experienced in a video game. Rather than text, everything is represented by a picture. Some pictures are selectable, revealing an actual menu, but it is exceptionally clumsy. For example, to change your opponent's car, you have to highlight him, then press the shoulder buttons. Very unintuitive. Still, once you get past the oddness, the game begins. The Need for Speed is basically a checkpoint racer. You take command of one of the eight hottest cars of the time and cruise the open road, hoping to beat this guy, score points, and watch a victory video. At first, the Need for Speed seems very sluggish. The sense of speed is somewhat lacking, and I wouldn't exactly call the controls responsive. After a few races, however, the game starts to grow on you. While the controls seem somewhat laggy, they are predictable and work within the confines of the D-pad. The rear will also kick out now and again, which is a nice touch. Next, the courses are actually very well laid out. Something about the rolling hills and gentle bends is almost hypnotic. And while the Need for Speed may not succeed at being a great racing game, it absolutely succeeds at being a terrific driving game. Sections of the courses are a real treat to race through, and the 17 minutes it can take to complete the Alpine course flashes by before you know it. It is worth noting selecting the novice difficulty will give you two sections of each course, while choosing a higher difficulty level will unlock a third section. You'll want to start on a higher difficulty too, as the third section of each course is where the best pieces of open road can be found. Sadly, there are only three courses to race through. City feels like it could be any generic highway through a large metropolitan city. Coastal feels like the highway of America's Pacific Coast. And finally, Alpine is a romp through mountain highways, complete with snow in the final section. I'm not sure there is much difference between the actual structure of the three courses, though the final third of the Alpine is easily my favorite, and blasting through it in one of the Italian cars is some of the most fun I've had in a racer in quite some time. Unfortunately, if you're looking for some sort of championship or progression, you just aren't going to find it in the 3DO version of the Need for Speed. Later ports would include extra tracks and modes, but this 3D original is pretty bare bones. I found enjoyment in pitting the RX-7 against the Supra, the Corvette against the Viper, and the Ferrari 512 against the Diablo, but if you don't care about 90 sports cars, you'll find the lack of race modes a bit of a turnoff. Moving on to the technical aspects of today's program, we have to talk about the graphics. Considering the 3DO hit store shelves in 1993, I'm still blown away by what Electronic Arts was able to pull off here. The road itself looks great, and I believe is using a traditional line-scrolling engine. Outside the road is a nice mix of polygon terrain and sprite-based obstacles, giving the entire package a terrific three-dimensional feel. The cars themselves all look good for the time. The 3D models and low-res textures do a serviceable job. This is no Gran Turismo, but I could tell you what each car was without the aid of a guide. Additionally, having real 3D cars allowed EA to do things that hadn't really been done in mainstream racing games before. Collisions with the other cars actually feels pretty good. With a bit of luck, you can do a full 360 and keep on trucking. If you really mess up, you flip your car and have to wait a few moments for a new car to be presented for you. Another thing the developers did was add cops. Your car is equipped with a radar detector, which beeps faster the closer you get to a cop. If you speed past an officer, you'll hear sirens and you need to focus on outrunning them. If a cop managed to get in front of you, you'll get a speeding ticket and lose valuable time. Finally, there is the audio. 
Sadly, no music plays during the actual driving. Thankfully, the engine notes are all fairly solid. The rotary engine of the RX-7 sounds nothing like the throaty V10 of the Viper, which sounds nothing like the fantastic wine only Italy's finest engines can produce. Little touches like this really add to the overall presentation. Overall, the need for speed on the 3DO is an odd game to review. The PlayStation and Saturn versions are more fleshed out experiences, with more opponents and more game modes, but I don't think I care. The actual experience of blasting down the highway in a 90s sports car, dodging traffic, trying to beat your best times is immensely satisfying. In the end, all I really care about is how a game makes me feel. The Need for Speed on the 3DO is one of those driving games where you can really lose track of time, getting immersed fully into the game, and losing a sense of the world around you. In the end, this is what video games are all about. It's a bit rough around the edges, but the game is still fantastic. 4 out of 5.